Yo, just want to welcome everyone to the Harsh Reality YouTube channel. Um, the Harsh Reality uh, name essentially just kind of stems from you know reality within itself. Um, the reality of a situation is the truth about it, especially when it is unpleasant or difficult to deal with. So that's just kind of um, the idea behind what um, this channel is all about. Um, and the, the basic uh, content of this actual channel will be gaming, life, you know, and then we'll probably hit on some movies, TV shows, things of that nature. Just, you know, just something to kind of kick back and kick it on, you know, so we just figure, um, you know, we kind of take it from there. So this is kind of like the introduction of my first ramble video. So to give you an understanding of what, you know, the content will be about um, in this particular video is I want to kind of consider this one to be the uh, state of gaming, kind of where we are within the, uh, the gaming community and then with the console wars and, you know, and things of that nature. So a little bit about me just really quick. Um, I, I guess I'll go by, by DT. So you can just call me DT if you ever leave me a comment in the comments section or if you want to address me in some type of way, form or fashion. Um, anyone who actually taps into this channel, um, you may have seen different my, uh, my different gamer tags or IDs thrown around in different um, social media sites. On Xbox Live, I'm the Bishop and Juice, and then YouTube is Harsh Reality. Um, then I got uh, King David in the Flesh on Twitch. You know, just you know a couple different things. So if I left any out, um, I'll probably go back in and do some edits or anything like that to kind of add some different um, venues essentially. But again, the purpose of this video is just rambling. Kind of talk about what's going on with the gaming community and um just just essentially state the obvious you know a couple fact couple facts and uh again just the reality of what's going on that's why the channel was called harsh reality because um however harsh you know this is just with the reality of what's going on you know so to start things off um, i guess the hot topic that's going on right now is uh the um, PS5 and the PlayStation and, and what Sony has going on and what Sony has been able to do within the gaming community um, and within the actual, um, let's just say, uh, the, the world of uh, entertainment when it comes to games. And um, I honestly only, I, see, I, I personally think that, uh, you know, PlayStation really only does like one thing, right? But the one thing that they do right is, is, is what needs to be right, you know, and that's the exclusive games. You know, whenever you talk a strength or a weakness when it comes down to a PlayStation um, at any form, PlayStation 1, 2, 3, or 4, uh, one thing that you always will be able to say is that um, they've always come with an, an exclusive um, library of games that definitely will keep your attention and whomever's attention when it comes down to the talking points whether you you know sell systems or you're just talking to someone else about an experience that you went through when you're you know, when you're playing the game you know so i i have to always tip my, tip my hat to sony for their exclusive games um but with that being said that's that's about it essentially um and i'll explain why um I like to go into what my personal preferences are I watch a lot of YouTube videos and listen to a lot of uh, personal, um, personal, uh, basically just information from different YouTubers and people who create content. And uh, a lot of people talk about what they like personally. But then you have also a lot of people who basically, uh, I, I like to call it count, pen, count counting pennies, um, throw a lot of uh, figures around this, this Sony sold this. Or, Microsoft sold that or Nintendo sold this or, you know, I, I honestly don't understand why that, I mean I, I mean, I understand why it matters, but in a, in a conversation that you're having with someone else in relativeness to what you like, why does, how does that matter? You know, if I make, if I make a hundred thousand dollars in one year and you only make 50 and we're talking about, um, who likes specific content, um, what does the amount of money that that company made matter in reference to whether or not you like something that they make or not, you know, so I, I won't be throwing numbers around. Now that's something that I would probably just leave to, um, I will, I will consider them to be the YouTube, the YouTuber in, uh, enthusiasts, <laughs> you know, um, I like to just get right down to it, you know, again, harsh reality. Let's just get down to what it is. And, um, 
there there would be no uh, no goalpost moving uh, on my channel essentially. So um, at some point, if this channel does develop and then we get a, a good growing, a good following, um, I would like uh, for people to be able to come and join the channel and then um, be able to express themselves for what they like, you know. Um, but I, I, mean, I, I essentially wouldn't take a side either way. Uh, when it comes down to a console and I'll get a little bit deeper into that as um, as this uh, recording goes but um, originally and to this very day to be perfectly honest with whomever's watching or listening I am an Xbox guy I want you know to to the heart um, and my reason for being an Xbox guy is because you know throughout their life cycle I've always found that you know my gaming experience on the Xbox console, um, this kind of reigns supreme for me, uh, personally. Um, whenever it came down to playing sports games or whether it was playing shooters, um, RPGs, I just got the better experience. I mean, the, the, the gameplay just kind of always felt like it ran smoother. Um, and the controllers were always more comfortable in my hands. Um, that could have a lot to do with uh, Sony and you have to kind of look at their demographic and who they designed for. And, you know, essentially, if you don't have a problem with their controller and, you know, that's really good, but they're they're aimed at an Asian audience with an Asian. And I'm, this is no race. No, um, I'm not racist or anything like that. But um, um, Asians, from what the, from the research that I've done, have the tendency to have smaller hands. So those controllers are smaller to where it's with an Xbox controller. I'm, they're designed for a, more an Americanized hand. And, uh, you know, it just it just it just feels better, you know. Um, on top of um, having games like Halo, to, which was my influence to actually even try an Xbox to begin with when it was released. I was playing PlayStation back then, and, um, you know, I was introduced to Halo by a good friend of mine. And then I've been on board with Xbox ever since, with the 360 and the innovation that went into the 360. Um, exclusivity as well played a big role in uh, Xbox having a lot of... Uh, third-party support with the 360 and then when the xbox one released um that was like a crash and burn that was that was a really really bad release for uh, microsoft and that was a really really big jump and leap and uh, takeover for uh, sony with the playstation 4 you know so that's kind of where we are right now to kind of sum up both generations again throughout that whole time frame sony had exclusives that was just kicking um anything that microsoft had to had to come with and with when it comes to exclusives even with like gears and halo and forza um sony was just killing everything that they had um, when they were releasing their exclusives um so just to name a few of, of the sony exclusives that i like myself personally um and i'll kind of let you know why or why i don't like these games but the horizon zero dawn for me i thought was a pretty cool game but it was kind of boring to me um my top two is the last of us and then god of war um, I'm kind of bent between the two. I think I would pick The Last of Us over The God of War for this generation time frame now. But in the beginning of PlayStation's life cycle, I was a God of War, you know, nut. Um, I thought Spider-Man was just okay. Ghost of Tsushima looks like it'll be good whenever it releases. Um, Death Stranding looks good. Um, essentially, I'm a big fan of big fan of um, of his work and um metal gear and i've always been a fan of metal gear so i'm very interested in what's going to go go on in this actually in this actual game um essentially we don't know exactly what's going on from what i can see or i'm gonna say i don't know what's going on but uh i'm really interested in what's going to go on in this in this actual game and see what, what the deal is um never been a fan of gran turismo i just don't like their racing games to be honest never have um so with with that little small block of exclusive, there's tons more that Sony put tons of money into, and and they they do a fucking good job when they do so. I mean, even with the Concrete Genie games, not something that I would play, but it looks cool and it looks like it's um it, it would be appealing to someone or a, a certain um, audience who would um, gravitate to some a game like that and actually play it. You know that that diverse. Uh, content there in the imagination of whoever created that and i haven't looked to see who created it and why but um essentially kind of explains the difference in the sales when it comes to um, the xbox over the playstation and you know again i'm not a i don't look at the actual 
numbers. I just kind of hear numbers being thrown around, and apparently um, Sony has sold a shit ton more than Xbox has. You know, and with that being said, um, ultimately at the end of the day, when it when it gets personal, um, I still only turn my PlayStation on when um, there's an exclusive out. I I generally don't play anything else on my PlayStation except for exclusives. Um, I I just don't like the experience that I get. I'm not saying that the graphics aren't there, and not saying that the um, the fidelity and the and you know frames and things of that nature are lacking it's just that i just don't get that that ultimate experience that i get when i'm playing my uh my, my titles on my xbox you know and with xbox and their exclusives it's kind of hard to even run down a list i mean i could bring up a bunch of old games but um i really don't see the point in bringing any of those up but i mean to just name a few in comparison to what i said in reference to sony's um state of decay super lucky tale crackdown 3 um, see if these quantum break recore sunset overdrive in the beginning of the generation halo gears forza ori and then we have that ash and bullshit um those games just don't stack up to what sony makes and that's that's just being being, being honest that's that's real so um what i did was i actually built a uh, gaming pc early this year and that was my first time actually jumping into um, PC gaming. And what that did for me was it actually did a lot for me in reference to um, I felt I felt really bad once I started actually playing um, some games on PC and the um, stereotype that it has. I like to go ahead and say that it's, it's definitely not as hard as people try to make it out to be. And it definitely is that awesome. <laughs> I like I I don't even look at consoles essentially to um, when I look forward to titles that that's releasing. I, I look for them to be on on PC, and um, PC just gives you everything. You know when it comes down to frames, textures, graphical power. Um, I mean optimization. You could just do a shit ton more with a p with with a game on pc versus on a console consoles you're so you're, you're restricted to what that console can do um but with pc i mean you can just take it to a whole nother level um but i actually did build a powerhouse of a gaming pc i got a uh um the evga geforce uh, rtx 2080 ti and i was this is my first build so i went all the way and I got a black edition, so I didn't spend like fifteen hundred bucks on the graphics card, but I I spent a little over a thousand for it. Um, Thirty-two gigs of RAM. I'm running about eight fans. Um, I got uh, thirty-two gigs of RAM. You know, um, SSDs. I got the onboard um, that M.2 um, SSD on board. Um, so. My only problem that I run into right now is that I just need, I have to buy more um, hard drive space for, you know, downloading games. Essentially, I didn't buy like a huge amount of uh, storage because I just didn't know exactly how I was going to like it, but I love it. Um, now, to bring the reason why I bring PC into this is because um, when I look at what the next consoles are going to be when it comes to PS5 and then when it comes to the Xbox Scarlet, um, when I look at what my PC can do or what those two systems could potentially be in relativeness to what my PC can do, my PC would still outperform what's coming next as a console. Now, why the reason why I bring that up is, um, you know, yeah, a console for me at this point would just be like convenience. Um, the ability to be able to just, you know, just flop on a couch and, you know, turn on a console and just, you know, get some gaming in, you know. But when I get really hardcore with it, um, it's going to be, you know on my pc as long as the you know the game is available on pc you know versus console uh so with game pass and then game pass being on pc and cross with the actual console um and then xbox doing things like day and date exclusives uh and then multiplass of course and primary will more than likely be on pc unless, unless it's something like what um rockstar does and you have to wait like a year later shit like that but um it kind of makes it to where I feel like I don't know if it's something that I would want to purchase right away if I can just play it on my PC. And then apparently uh, Sony has the, the PlayStation now that's on PC, but at a lower resolution. If for any reason they do a day and date, then if someone was to ask me the question of what console are you going to buy if you could only buy one, I probably wouldn't buy any. 
you know, because now I got this powerhouse of a PC where I can just pay for services, get those actual day and date games, plus my multiplayer at whichever avenue I have to get those. And then I'm playing everything, um, hopefully at an optimal level with PlayStation uh, now being at 720p. Uh, I mean, uh, hopefully Sony could kind of beef that up a little bit, at least do like a um, 1080 or something, because I, mean, I could make 1080 look really good on my PC. So um, it, it kind of makes it hard for the next generation consoles to compete when it comes down to someone who runs a, a, a powerful gaming PC. But at the end of the day, let's say, let's take the PC out of this, and I'm looking at two consoles, what console am I going to buy? Then I have to weigh out different things. Well, I have a huge library on Xbox versus on PlayStation. But, of course, you have your PlayStation people who, if these hundreds of millions of consoles sold, I don't expect one to say, well, I'm not going to buy a PlayStation 5. You know, I think everyone who has a PS4 who's a fan is going to buy a PS5. So they'll have equal the adaptation rate um, going forward in upgrading. I guess if it's necessary, because if there's if if Sony releases something at launch day that's exclusive that you have to actually have a PS5 for, there's going to be a ton of people that buy it. But you're going to have some people who's going to say, well, I'll just keep playing my PS4 Pro um, up until when, you know, I could afford to actually go and just do a quick upgrade. Because if the Pro can do um, essentially what the next PS5 can do and in, in the very beginning, we all know that those. Um, new console releases have to be optimized and developers have to kind of figure out the the bells and whistles and the tricks so sometimes those early launch games and then the previous sets they kind of run really close together um i kind of did that with the uh, wii u and the switch when zelda breath of the wild released i just bought it on the wii u and i didn't buy a switch and that would have probably been the only reason i would have bought a switch um, and I, I told myself that I would buy a Switch when Metroid released. Metroid never released, and as of right now, I, I don't own a Switch. Um, and it's essentially just because, you know, I would only play certain games on the Switch. Um, the one game I was going to buy a Switch for was called uh, My Friend Pedro. Came out a few months back, but then I seen that it was available on Steam. Bought it on Steam, played it on my PC, and then I've saved money now. I don't have a Switch still, you know. So that's just kind of how that works. And kind of how the infrastructure of the gaming set is, and that's kind of, to kind of to kind of wrap up um, where I took this actual um, piece of the actual um, ramble sh video is that Sony has always had exclusive. Sony will always have exclusive games. You know they do that shit really well, and it shows. It pays off, and I will not argue with anyone about them having bad exclusive they don't have bad exclusive their exclusives are really good i mean even some i didn't mention the order 18 was 1886 and then um uh bloodborne you know what i mean they they have they have exclusives that are like really 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 awesome um and with that being said that's the reason why i play playstation but i play xbox for everything else um plus their exclusives whenever we do get a, a good one you know so um what I would do is I would, I mean, if it was me and I only had to pick one console, I would probably go with the Scarlet. Um, simply because I have a library that's going to carry over. I have, I have a lot of uh, money invested into the uh, the games that I have on my Xbox platform. And then when it, in, in, in versus with the PS5, I only have exclusives on my, um, my PS4 Pro. So, um... I would probably wait till the PS5 has maybe two or three. Let's just let's just go low. I'll say I'll wait till they have two new exclusive titles or sequels on the system before I go out and spend you know five hundred or six hundred bucks on that particular uh, upgrade. Otherwise, I would just play my PS4 Pro um, in the meantime versus not buying a Scarlet. You know, so both these consoles come out in 2020. I would start with the Scarlet, and then you know, essentially um, upgrade to a PS5 a little later, um, depending on when they release their um, exclusives. You know, um, my friends list is deeper on Xbox as well, since I've been playing um, heavily on the play on the Xbox platform since the uh, OG Xbox. So um, it, it really wouldn't benefit me. Um, and I'm, I guess I'm a part of a small demographic with these uh, 
with with the numbers that the, the guys on YouTube throw around in reference to how many Xboxes uh, Microsoft sold. And then, you know, there's a few people that says that Xbox and Microsoft doesn't display how many actual figures they actually sell. I, I mean, at me, I'm the type of I don't I don't really care about that kind of stuff. I mean, I guess it matters to some and then it matters if you are looking to invest your money in something that'll be around for a while. I don't see any of these two companies um, going anywhere anytime soon in reference to bankruptcy and just dying out because people aren't buying. So I don't think that's something that would even make a good argument. Um, I think it would boil down to what actually feels feels good when, when you play it, you know, and what you actually like. But um, there's a lot of times I watch YouTube. Uh, oh, well, well, there's a lot of times when I watch podcasts and, and guys get to uh, having debates and things of that nature. Um, it's more so about what one likes personally versus the other. And then you get the name calling and you're this, you're that, and you're stupid and blah, blah, blah. And I've gotten into a lot of Twitter arguments about, you know, uh, not being intelligent enough to understand because I'm because I'm not a hardcore Sony guy. And, you know, I just I just think that's kind of stupid, but um, yet sometimes entertaining. So I still kind of cater to what's going on with that, too. So um, just wanted to kind of make a video to kind of hint at some points just to kind of bring some kind of uh, light to this situation. You know, Sony will always have exclusives, you know what I mean? And, um, you know, I definitely see the next PS5 being a really powerful console. Um, however, I just don't see them uh, showing up Microsoft and um, with the with the Xbox Scarlet when it comes down to um, overall power and then with the new studio acquisitions. So, that, OK, yeah, that makes a good point. So there was there was one um, and I won't say exactly whose podcast I was watching, but um they stated, hey, you know, well, what's the point of uh, why wouldn't I just buy a PlayStation? Um, because within three years, they'll have sequels to the games that were that were bangers for the PS4. You know, I would just buy a PlayStation over an Xbox, you know, which is still kind of contradictory, you know, because within three years of the Scarlet's release, you could have uh, new IPs from those additional studios that Microsoft acquired. I mean, we could be looking at within three years of its release uh tons of new ips or sequels on both sides um i think it would all just boil down to a matter of preference and what you know you actually like personally um when it comes down to something like that i mean they these you know microsoft has already kind of gave you given us all a blueprint as to what they have in mind and what they're trying to do you know just some some just want to see it and uh in my lifetime, I've I've learned that, you know, there's a lot of nosy people in this world. And some people are most people are just nosy and they just want to know and they just have to know. And if they don't know, then they start to, be, you know, come angry and start to, you know, make things up and, just, you know, get frustrated and, you know, not have patience. But patience is a virtue. You know what I mean? So I want to try to go ahead and wrap this uh, this this video up um, just on a on a lighter note that uh you guys can always check me out on Twitter. Um, I'm on Xbox Live, Bishop and Juice. Um, YouTube, the channel, of course, is Harsh Reality. And, um, you know, I jump around from different uh, podcasts and I go into the chats and I post comments and, you know, say different things or whatever. So um, if you guys have any um, questions for me or if you have any um, comments, anything you want me to hint on, um, feel free to hit me in the uh, in the comment section. I'll probably reply really fast, and uh, you know, hopefully, I could get this uh, this channel growing and uh, develop a, a core following of people who just like to game. You know, who who wants to just you know kick back and take a step away from actual reality in your life, and uh, you know, just have a little fun and, and and meet some new people, and you know, just have some good experiences. So, um, in conclusion, again, harsh reality. Um, the YouTube channel. This is my first like introduction video. Just hinting at some facts about the actual um, state of gaming and the fact that uh, Sony will always have exclusives and that um, Microsoft and Xbox will always play games better. You know, at the end of the day, that's just kind of what it is. And then at the very, very end of the day, PC reigns supreme is number one. So when it comes to gaming, um, yeah. So I'll, I'll be probably bringing more videos uh, i'm going to try to do a couple videos a week to start i also do have some um 
some gameplay videos posted, whether from PC or Xbox. Um, and I think I got some some PlayStation Share gameplay on my channel too. Just I got about 12 or 13 gameplay videos um, on the actual channel right now. Um, so whomever's watching this or listening, if you want to see a little bit of the gameplay video that I captured, and then I'll also start to kind of do some things where I got I'll, I'll talk over some captures, and then um, hopefully potentially at some point. If um if I you know gain an actual following or get some get some good members going, um continuously maybe we can develop this thing and to do like a weekly podcast or something like that, um just to kind of grow the channel and you know just branch off and do a little something different. So again, my channel set um you know is this is about gaming core gaming not one particular side. Um again like I said I am an Xbox guy but I play everything you know so I'm not just isolated to just the Xbox and I don't fanboy it you know what i mean i will talk shit with anyone um so yeah that's just it you know this harsh reality we just kicking it talking about games movies and life peace